If you're serious about becoming better at soccer, I want to show you how I went from a bench warmer to a game changer. I'm going to show you how I transformed my game, became a standout player, earned personal awards, and finally got to a point where I started feeling valued and appreciated by my team. And more importantly, I want to show you how you can do the same. This is not going to be like other soccer training tutorials, but if you're serious about improving, this is one you want to watch. If you've been watching lots of tutorials, but you're not playing well, improving fast enough, or getting the results that you want, it might be time for a real discussion because more drills are not going to help you if we don't discover what is really holding you back. I didn't solve my problems and overcome my pains in soccer by getting better drills. I want to show you what actually helped me. My name is Dylan Tooby. I've helped players all around the world improve faster and achieve more in the sport of soccer. I have a YouTube channel with over 100 million views. I privately train players and coach teams. I've earned a college scholarship and even played for my national futsal team. But today I want to explain the story of how I went from failure to success. From quitting my college team because the coach didn't want me, I was stuck on the bench, underperforming, and soccer was bringing me more stress than joy. Looking back, that was my lowest point in soccer. I was humiliated and embarrassed but it actually ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me because it forced me to go on an amazing personal journey of soccer development. I was able to transform myself into a player who actually made a difference in games. I came back to get the revenge on my coach that overlooked me and the team that thought I wasn't good enough to play. I became the top goal scorer in the league, won personal awards, and suddenly everyone wanted me on their team. If you're currently struggling in soccer or you just want to keep getting better, I want to show you how to go from a chronic underachiever like me to a consistent game changer. I'll show you the key foundational components that I know will help every player if they're tired of feeling irrelevant to their team and want to become the type of player who can make an impact. The first thing you need to do is learn that you are the problem, but you are also the solution. When I quit my college soccer team, I was all alone. My teammates stopped talking to me. My coach was happy I left. There was no practices to challenge me to improve. I had no accountability to anyone. I was all by myself. And in the beginning, it was very dark. But through the darkness, I started to find my light. I wanted to come back and prove everyone wrong. But it was just me. I realized if that was going to happen, I had to do something about it. I recognized that I had become dependent on my team and my coach. If we were not practicing, I was not getting better. And if I wanted to come back and prove everyone wrong, I couldn't do it as the same player I was. It was my responsibility to turn myself into a new type of player. And although that seemed overwhelming at the time, it gave me all my power back. Instead of relying on someone else or waiting for my next practice, I could spend my own time changing myself. I got myself into this situation and I was gonna get myself out of it. So the first lesson I want you to understand is that you are the reason for your problems and you are also the solution. If you are unhappy with your current situation, that is the result of the actions you've taken in the past. If you wanna change your situation, you need to take new actions. If you want your life to become better, you must become someone else. If you remain the same person, you will be stuck in the same situation. Life doesn't change unless we change. So stop expecting things to change if you don't start changing yourself. Take full responsibility for your own development and make a brutally honest review of yourself. When I was at my lowest point, I got real with myself. I started to identify all the areas of my game that needed improvement. I sucked at shooting, I was slow, I was weak. I would give up if things got tough. I finally admitted my weaknesses because that gave me the power to fix them. Players who don't admit their weaknesses can never improve. Finally, I made a commitment and I really want you to do the same, a commitment to never complain or blame other people for my situation. It's not my coach's fault, it's not my teammate's fault, it's not the referee's fault. We need to take ownership because when we stop blaming other people, we take back all our power to improve. When you ask, what can I do to change the situation, you can actually change the situation. Blaming other people gives them all the power. 
you give away all responsibility and you put the direction of your future in someone else's hand. If things are not going your way, recognize that you are the problem. And more importantly, you have the power to make things better because you are the solution. The next lesson I want to share with you is that your mind is your most powerful tool. Too many soccer players think that their feet are what will bring them success, but all of your skills will be wasted if you don't learn to unlock the power of your mind. As I mentioned earlier, hitting rock bottom was the best thing that ever happened to me. In that moment, I had a realization that changed my life forever. When bad things happen, they are often blessings in disguise. If I never quit that team, I never would have been forced to look at myself in the mirror, to ask myself the hard questions like, what do I really want to achieve and who do I really want to become? Even today, these lessons serve me. When I was broke, it forced me to make more money. When I was overweight, it forced me to get into great shape. When my soccer career was a mess, it forced me to sort it out. You may have heard the quote, life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. So I would challenge you to really start looking at the negative moments in your life as incredible opportunities to learn and grow. Ask yourself, what is this difficult situation trying to teach me? And I quickly realized that mentality is way more important than ability. Just think about it. Why are there so many talented players around the world that don't achieve their goals? Why do good players crumble under pressure? Why do some people never recover from setbacks while others come back stronger than ever? It has nothing to do with ability and everything to do with mentality. Regardless of your age, understanding the importance of developing your mental toughness may be the most important thing you ever discover. We spend so much time working on our skills, but very little time working on our minds. If you're struggling with confidence right now, understand confidence is a skill, just like shooting or dribbling. And like any skill, it can and must be improved with practice. You may not realize it, but you can control the voices in your head. In fact, that's what confidence is. It's talking yourself forward through difficult times. Everyone can feel confident when things are going well. Your coach likes you, you're playing well, your team is winning, but guess what? That's not real confidence. Real confidence is developed when everything is going wrong. You're stuck on the bench, you're not playing well, the coach doesn't like you, those are the moments where you can either start being negative, make excuses, give up, or you can choose to talk yourself forward through the struggle. Practicing will give you more belief in your abilities, but real confidence is only created when you've been knocked down and you get yourself back up. So I want you to really start becoming aware of the thoughts in your head. You are responsible for those thoughts. Analyze, how do you talk to yourself when things start going wrong? Because those are the moments you want. Those are the moments where confidence is earned and the hidden power of your mind can be unlocked. The next lesson I wanna share with you is that if you wanna become better than other players, you must train differently than other players. I knew if I wanted to be better than I was before, I couldn't keep training the same way. But I also wanted to dominate my old teammates, so I couldn't train the same way they did. How does the average player train? They usually go to the field, juggle a ball for a bit, hit some dead balls and free kicks, and call it a day. They never really challenge themselves in a way that will actually force them to transform into a different type of player. If you keep doing the same thing, you are going to keep getting the same results. If you do what is easy, the match will be hard. If you do what is hard, the match becomes easy. We need to realize that the success we want is in the hard work we've been hiding from. It's hidden in the weaknesses in our game we've been avoiding. Change the way you look at hard work. It's something you want to do because that's what's gonna turn you into the player that you wanna be. If you continue to hide from it, you'll keep being frustrated with the way that you're playing. Run towards the hard work and the game will start to become easy. I started studying not only the best soccer players, but the most successful people in the world in all different areas of life. What made these people so special? It wasn't their goals because lots of people have big goals and wanna be successful, but they never make it happen. It was their habits. 
Goals are just dreams unless you execute on them daily. You can't set goals and expect them to happen. You need to identify the exact habits that are going to bring those goals towards you. In fact, I discovered that these really successful people almost disconnect from their goals and instead they fall in love with their habits. If you want to become a great soccer player, you need to fall in love with the process of getting better every day. If you do not become addicted to the daily grind of getting better, you don't deserve to achieve the goal. The goal does not happen without habits and it requires doing the same habits over and over again. It's about doing the basics day in and day out, never thinking you're too good for something simple. Because the better we become, the more we realize how much needs to be improved. I remember watching professional soccer when I was 12 years old and thinking, these players are not that much better than me. Fast forward today, I'm 35, better than ever, and every day I'm realizing more and more how many things I can still improve. You have to be consistent with your daily efforts. Most players train well for a few days, then they fall off. You've probably experienced this before, I know I have in the past. Imagine how good you would be if you didn't keep stopping and starting. How much farther ahead would you be? Consistency is so important in training. That's why you need to find a training program that you can stick to. You don't need to overcomplicate the process. You don't need the most advanced drills. What you need is to become addicted to the process of making small improvements. Really execute on your daily habits and you won't have to chase your goals. Your goals will start coming to you. So why is it that some players can play well in training, but they can't put it together in games? After admitting my weaknesses and really increasing the quality and consistency of my training, I felt different. I was more skilled, I was faster, stronger, fitter, I was better in every way. I was a standout player in practices, but I still wasn't performing the way I knew I could in games. I realized that it all came back to mentality. If I looked at practices and games, I was the exact same player. I had the same amount of skill, same fitness, same level of experience. The only thing that was different was the way I was thinking. In practice, I was talking to myself confidently. I was excited to be there and show how much I had improved. I was focusing on everything that could go right. In matches, I was doing the opposite. I wasn't focusing on myself and what I could control. Instead, I was focusing on what other people would think of me if I didn't play well. I was visualizing embarrassing myself and making mistakes. I was focused on everything that could go wrong. Remember, mentality over ability. Once I brought awareness to this common mistake that all players make, things started to improve. I started performing in matches, scoring goals, and making a difference for my team. It felt amazing. My team finally valued me and looked towards me when we needed to win games. That's a feeling I want you to experience for yourself. Just a few other ideas that will help you play better in matches and not just in training. Multiply your match experience. You can train as much as you want, but there is no substitute for match experience. And the real truth is, most players are not playing enough games. Maybe right now you have one game per week with your team, but what if you had three? How much more confident would you be handling yourself in real match situations? When I really wanted to change my game, I joined more teams. At one point, I was playing in four different leagues, getting four or five games per week and training by myself during the day. I was playing 7v7, futsal, outdoor, and even co-ed soccer for some fun. Anything I could do to get more match experience. You don't have to be that extreme, but starting to think about new ways you can start getting more match experience instead of just sitting around waiting for your next game is going to help you perform better. Next, I want you to realize that you have to be willing to make mistakes if you want to make a difference. You can't keep playing it safe because you're scared of giving the ball away. If you're trying to make a bigger impact on games, you're going to make mistakes. That's part of the process. But if you always hide from trying, you will never improve. Instead of being afraid of making mistakes, you should be afraid of regretting not trying to do more. You must be willing to play forward passes, dribble past defenders, and take shots. One more thing, I want you to put yourself in more high pressure situations when you play. For example, step up and take the penalty shot when everyone is watching. 
Because what's even more important than scoring that goal is the confidence you gain from putting yourself in a situation where you might fail. Even if you step up and miss, you will gain so much more confidence and experience compared to a player who is too afraid to step up because they might make a mistake or embarrass themselves in front of someone else. If you never miss the penalty shot in your exhibition match when you're 16, you never get to score the penalty shot in the championship final when you're 23. You need to have a bigger vision for yourself and realize that the mistakes you make now are going to serve you in the future when it really matters most. Even after you've built a strong mental foundation, your training is dialed in and you're starting to play well in matches, bad things are still going to happen. It's part of the game, it's part of soccer. After I hit top form, started playing well, and my reputation was growing, it all happened again. And it was because I made a massive mistake. I got cocky. Things were going so well, I let it go to my head. I started taking my foot off the gas. I wasn't as disciplined with my training. My daily habits became inconsistent and my form started to drop. My teammates and coaches started looking at me differently. And to make everything worse, one day I came into a game without doing my normal warm up, and I pulled a muscle in my leg. I was injured and I was back on the sideline. I was devastated. But once again, this situation was a result of my own actions. I was the problem and it was time for me to be the solution. This injury gave me a little time to rest and rejuvenate to rethink my game again. I used that setback as another opportunity to come back stronger, make new improvements to my game, learn from my mistakes, and eventually come back better than ever. I openly admit my weaknesses and mistakes to you, so hopefully you don't have to go through the same pains. No matter how good you become, keep getting better. When things are going well, that's the most important time to keep going. Do not get complacent. Sadly, I say this and I know some players may still have to go through losing everything before they can learn this lesson for themselves. But hopefully that's not you, learn from me. It's important to recognize that your losses, your injuries and setbacks can be the most valuable moments in your career. Getting cut from a team, stuck on a bench, losing a championship final, these all might be the biggest motivation, the things that you need to really look at yourself and change what you're currently doing. Losers get discouraged by failure. They resort back to negativity. They feel depressed and sorry for themselves. Winners get motivated by failure. They use it as fuel for their fire. From now on, I challenge you to turn every setback into a comeback. Every time you get knocked down, you get up and you come back stronger. Use that frustration and pain. Use those negative emotions. Put them into your training. Channel that disappointment into your work ethic and hunger. Become so strong, nothing can stop you. Before I explain the fastest way for you to become a game changer, here are five action steps I want you to take because all of those ideas we talked about, they are nothing without execution. From now on, Never complain or blame anyone for your situation. Keep your power to yourself. Take full responsibility and be the solution to your problems. Start improving the way you talk to yourself through times of struggle. Confidence is a skill that must be practiced and developed. And difficult times are what you want because that's where real confidence is built. Follow through. Be the type of player who does what they say they are going to do. Be consistent with your training. Get addicted to the daily process of getting better. Don't repeat the process of stopping and starting over. Keep your momentum going. You don't have to be perfect tomorrow. You just have to be making progress. Put yourself in more high pressure situations in matches. It's so important for your development that you have the courage to try when you might fail instead of being too afraid to even try at all. And finally, use every setback as an opportunity to come back stronger. Leverage your losses. Let failure fuel your desire to succeed in the future. If you found this information valuable and you're truly serious about turning yourself into a game changer and impact player, this is the fastest method I have for transforming players into game changers. 
the Online Soccer Academy. This program will identify all the problems holding you back from being the player you know you can be and help you improve every single aspect of your game. Your skills, fitness, tactical intelligence will all be increased with this program. We talked a lot about how important improving your mentality really is. You will not find another coach online who focuses on improving the mental side of the game more than me. This program will give you a massive boost to your mental toughness and confidence. It takes the confusion out of training with this program. You will know exactly what to do each day to ensure that you're getting better and training differently than average players. With motivation and organizational tools to keep you on track, it's easy to follow through and designed for players who already have busy soccer schedules and other commitments. The consistency and quality of your match performances is going to improve. Even after one week of using this program, coaches and teammates are going to notice a difference in the way that you play. Thousands of players have already used this method to transform their game. The total value of everything included is $3,150. You can get access for only $315, but there are limited spots because I do offer personal coaching communication for every player involved, and I can only handle so many players at one time. If you wanna make this season your best season, I know this program works, and I would really regret not encouraging you to take action on this today. These methods work for me. They've already helped players from all around the world, all different ages, all different abilities. If you don't have noticeably better skills, confidence, and performances after finishing this program, I'll refund your money. If you feel there's anything missing from the program, just communicate with me, I'll work to add it for you. And I guarantee in one week, you'll already start to notice a difference in the way that you play. Daily training routines, player transformation modules, coaching lessons, professional match analysis videos, motivation and organizational tools, my personal WhatsApp, text access to me, lifetime access to content and all upgrades that come in the future. And on top of that, I'll give you an extra $1,150 in additional training resources absolutely free when you get started today. To get more information about how the Online Soccer Academy can help you overcome any struggles you're currently having in soccer, click the link below this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this content really helped you, gave you a boost of motivation and some new ideas to work on. I'd love for you to be a part of the Online Soccer Academy and allow me to really make a positive and lasting impact on your soccer career.